Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Earthbound Beginnings. Last time, we made our way to the depths of the Rosemary Manor, and we procured Melody number 4, which is super duper awesome. In between episodes, I did a bit of grinding. Some people might say this is overkill, myself included, but I figured, you know what, screw it, we're gonna do it. Also, Ninten has 1 HP less than his total, because in between episodes, I also went to the train station in Spookan and actually took a train back to Marysville, which is where we are right now, because that's where we have to go next. Also worth noting, checking out these stats right here, Anna has learned quite a few new PSI powers since we last left off. The highlight probably being Freeze Omega, which deals a lot of damage to a lot of enemies, I believe is how it works, which is very nice. And also worth noting, is Ninten has learned... where is it? Super healing, yeah, Ninten learned super healing, so now he is also capable of reviving fallen party members, which would have been pretty useful last episode, but we're just gonna go with it. Since I don't feel like explaining all of these PSI powers, since I think we learned about 10 across both characters, I'm just going to be linking the functionality page of all these from a couple of videos ago in the description again. Figured that'd probably be pretty good. Also worth noting, I also sold 10 mouthwashes and made a lot of money. You want to have 10 empty spaces in your inventory for what we're going to be doing next, because this episode, we are going to be heading to a new area to hopefully procure yet another song. Though, I don't think the thing that requires us to have 10 empty slots is actually required to get anything in the game. It's just definitely something you want to do for a bit more continuity in terms of the story, because there's a lot of story stuff in this game that you can just completely outright skip. And I don't want to do any of that, because I want to give the full experience, as it were. Also worth noting, this video might be a little bit long, obviously, as it is right now. I can't tell how long it's going to be, because I just started recording it. But this video might be a bit long because we have quite a bit of stuff to do before we get to the next save point, and I really want to get to the next save point before we end things off for people that are playing along. Anyway, as you can see, right here, east of the Union Station north of Marysville, this bridge is out. We want to be on the other side of that, so what we want to do is we actually want to zigzag all the way up around this way. Luckily, it looks like most of the enemies we have to deal with here are still of the weaker variety that we should come to expect from this area of the game, which is very, very nice. Alright, so let's head... wrong way. Let's head around a little bit. We have to take quite a big loop-de-loop -loop way to get all the way to where we want to go. I think it's this way, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Now, I want you to listen to this music really quick. Does that sound familiar to any of you? I sincerely hope it does. Anyway, right here, this is Yucca Desert. This area is freaking huge, which is scary to me. And unfortunately, one of the secrets I want to show is clear on the other side of this area, so... We're just going to have to run all the way over there and hope that we can check it out. So we're going to be running over here, and veterans of this game might know that I just ran past something really important, but I'd like to come across it in a more fitting way, as it were. Anyway, I think we're about halfway through the desert, and we just now get our first wild encounter, which is amazing. Rattlesnakes? are pretty scary. They have this attack called Last Blow, I believe it is, and if they do that, they will instantly kill themselves, but also do quite a bit of damage to you, so you want to take these guys out. And did we succeed? Yes, we did. Very nice. As you might imagine, some of the enemies in this area you really, really don't want to mess with, so keep that in mind. Running is a valid tactic, as they say in Xenoblade Chronicles. Alright, what's this? A gabalin. I don't know what kind of animal that is, but we are just going to fight it and hope we don't run into any issues, because I haven't exactly looked ahead 
as to how much damage these do. Okay, that's a little scary. Alright, what does that do? Apparently nothing. Alright. So we're gonna bash you. And we are still in a bit of a straight. You know what? Lloyd has this plasma beam thing, which has basically infinite uses, so we are just going to do that and see how well it works. Alright. And I like how we're getting yellow smash text. I like yellow. Yellow's a fun color. Alright, what does that do? Still nothing. I'm at a loss as to what that is supposed to do. Alright, how much is this going to do? 92 damage! Yeah, we are probably going to be using that plasma beam quite a bit, because as far as I know, it is infinite use. Alright. Right on over this way, in the corner, very, very corner of the desert, there is a single spot that we want to step on. I believe it is somewhere up here, if we can run into it. There it is! Certificate. David, we acknowledge the fact that you did step on the mine in the Yucca Desert. Keep this place to yourself, please. Signed, Shike Sato Itoi. Yep, they did. I believe NPCs will mention the existence of this spot to you at some point, but I figured might as well knock it out now because A, it's nigh on impossible to find unless you know where to look anyway, and B, we might not even be speaking to the NPCs in question because I don't know exactly who they are. Anyway, now that we've done that, we want to head back across the desert. Ooh, can we check this? No. That's unfortunate. In regular Earthbound, there are quite a few things that you can check out in- oh, boy. Um, I think running would be a good idea. There are a few things you can check out in the desert in Earthbound on the Super Nintendo, but unfortunately this game isn't quite as inventive, and wowee, I hope we don't run into that kind of fight again, because I'm not too terribly confident in my ability to take those things out without suffering some major damage, and seriously, again, the same fight. <sighs> Alright, run, run, run. I really don't want to- uh oh. Oh god, how much is this gonna do? Eight, that's not awful. Nine, can everyone just stop attacking Anna, please? Everyone's attacking Anna. What the heck? Everyone attacked Anna. I swear to God, if we get all the way through this, yes, okay. I was gonna say, if all that and we didn't even get away, that would have sucked. Okay, we wanna head right on back over this way, and eventually we are going to be seeing an oasis, and Nancy drew near. Okay, that's funny. I love how all, like, a lot of the enemies have, like, actual names to them. And wow, she missed. Very nice. Like, you have Nancy here, and you probably remember Wally from way back in Podunk. It's just really funny to me how they do that. Alright, can we please, yes, take it out. Very good. Some would argue that I'm overleveled right here, but honestly, when it comes to playing this game, my motto is better safe than sorry, and if you are not safe, then you will be very sorry. Anyway, this is probably a good opportunity to try out this super spray. We got this back in Duncan's factory, and it should kill all of the bug enemies on screen, unless Ninten does it first. Okay, please don't inflict like a poison status on me or anything. Okay, good. I don't know if that's a thing in this game, but it's something worth fearing. But anyway, as you can see, the super spray is an instant kill on bug enemies. Period. Which is really nice. Anyway, right here we have this dude. We want to talk to him. During the last war, I laid mines in this desert. I removed all but one of them, so watch your step. Oh, we're actually required to talk to this guy. So that's embarrassing. Well, not required, but required for doing the thing that I want to do. Oh, you want to ride on the plane? Yeah. Which flight plan would you like? You can pick any one you like. What we need to do is we need to ride the flight plans ten times to get ten ticket stubs, because I'm pretty sure we only get one each time, even though there's three of us. But I think what I want to do is I want to show each flight plan once and then just montage through doing A over and over. So, let's do this one. The airfare is $15 for that flight. Save your tickets to- oh, well, maybe we get three. 
Maybe we do get three. After you get ten stubs, you can take the tank. He's not kidding. Oh my god, this game. You look so happy about that. Ha ha ha. And we hop into the plane. And this is going to give us a grand tour of the Yucca Desert. That um, cactus that he's circling around, we walked past it before, but that is your indication that that is important. So soon enough, we are going to be going to check that out because it has something very, very important for us, as you might imagine. Alrighty, so as we head around this way and that way, he's only going to show us the Yucca Desert. He's going to pan over these ruins, which you definitely want to keep in mind for the future. And he's going to zigzag around a little bit more, and eventually he's going to come right back here and land. Very nice. Now, what do we have in our inventory? Goods. Okay, that does give us three. Oh, so we don't have to take as many rides as we thought, and Anna is there glitching out. Alright, let us try out flight plan B. The airfare is $30 for that flight. Save your ticket stubs. But I mean, we have like $40,000 to our name, so we're probably okay with taking the more expensive flight plan. Although if you really want a penny pinch, you can either just take A four times or just not do this at all all because I don't think this is required to beat the game. Anyway, this flight plan is going to give us a bit more broad of a view. It's going to zoom all the way out here. I think all the way to the Union Station? Or no, where are we going? Oh, this is Podunk. Yeah, that's our house right there. Yeah, so this is definitely a very, very good indicator of how the entire overworld of Earthbound Beginnings is completely connected. It's like one of the earliest, I don't know if I'd call it an open world game because it is still decently linear, but there's a lot of stuff in this game you can do out of order or not do or do in different orders or anything like that. So I figure, I guess it is pretty open world, although there is a very commonly accepted route for going through it, which is what I am doing right here. Anyway, let's talk to you. Let's check out Flight Plan C, see where this goes. It's probably going to give us a preview as to things to come. Alright, so he's going to talk us a bit, and then we are going to hop in the plane a third time, and where is this one going to take us? Looks like it's going pretty far north. Alright, so far it seems relatively standard fare. Alright, where are we going now? Pretty far, I think. I think we're out past where the desert ends, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, not sure where this is. This is pretty much a preview as to some future areas in the game, and a lot of them I'm not too terribly familiar with. I think we just cut past Spookan or something right there. Unless maybe that's Youngtown, which I don't think we've been to yet, but it's been mentioned to us. Alright, here's a train station, which I also don't think we've visited which is definitely fascinating. Alright, and I think with that, we are going to head right back over to this station. And unfortunately, with that, we have nine ticket stubs, and we need ten. So I am going to take this last flight plan, and we will be montaging that out, and then we are going to be taking the tank. Wait, do I seriously have to like, uh, really, do I have to get rid of more stuff? Hey, uh, well, I can throw away two ticket stubs. Alright, so let's drop that one, and then head over here and drop that one, and now we should be able to take this. And here we are. Now before we turn in our stubs, of which we now have 10, we want to head back over to that cactus that he was circling in that plane. This one right here. I think we want to check it. Wait, a voice is speaking into Ninten's mind. We want to go into PSI and use telepathy. 
the cactus sang. And for whatever reason, it kept on singing. Ninten remembered the tune. As random as that is, there is the fifth melody. Yeah, we're quick shotting them now, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get another one next episode, which is kind of crazy. Anyway, now that we've done that, we want to come over here, head into our goods, and give him our many, many ticket stubs. Great, I see you saved ten stubs. Take my tank. You sure look happy. Ha ha ha. And with that, no joke, we are now in this tank, and we are driving it through the desert, because what the hell, right? Yeah, in this game, you can actually drive a tank around, and it plays some awesome music. I don't know if this is supposed to be like the NES's take on heavy metal or something like that, but it's a thing. You will not encounter enemies while inside the tank, which is very nice. So this is probably a good chance to head over to those ruins, which are... where are they? I think they're somewhere around here. Where are these ruins? They're around here somewhere. Aha! Here we go. We want to head inside. R7037 drew near. Luckily, we are in a tank, so even though this death machine is definitely hell-bent on killing us, we should be okay. Lloyd bounced back the attack, and it suffers 296 damage. Ninten fired the tank gun. Anna fired the tank gun. Lloyd fired the tank gun. Yes, this is a thing that is happening right now. Just casual reminder, actually happening. Alrighty. So let's keep on bashing away at this guy, bounce back the attack, and eventually he should fall to the assault of this amazing tank, which apparently this guy used in a war, because that's a thing. Yeah, the game gets kind of wacko from here on out, I do have to tell you that. Anyway, with that, R7037 was destroyed and the tank is broken. And we get a lot of experience for that. But yes, the tank has been scrapped. If you go back to the veteran, he won't be there anymore, so don't even bother going back to apologize because he's pieced out for the moment. Anyway, in here, we have these caves. This is the Monkey Grotto, which I believe also has a musical reference to the um, Monkey Grotto that appears in the NES Earthbound, which is really, really cool. Anyway, there's quite a few items in here that you're going to want to grab. Let's check. Do we have... We give them the... Yes, we do have give them the ticket stubs. Which is good, because I really, really don't want to carry them around. Anyway, I wouldn't bother talk talking to any of these monkeys. Most monkeys here will lie to you. Beware. Yes, indeed. The monkeys here are full of crap. If they try and give you directions... They're not helping you. Like, sorry, but they won't. Anyway, just gonna provide a little guide on how to navigate this area because I, in my infinite resourcefulness, have a map, which is very, very convenient. I'm gonna grab all the items in here just because we have so much inventory space and I don't think anything attacks us down here, which I am very, very grateful for. Inside here, we have a PSI stone, which I believe restores PP, which can be incredibly useful. Wrap around here, and I believe there's another one in this box. Let's check that. And yes, it is a PSI stone. Looking at the map, it looks like the next one is down this way zigzag right on through here. Man oh man am I glad that stuff doesn't attack us down here because the worst thing about mazes, well the worst type of maze is a maze with wild encounters in it. So luckily we aren't going to be getting those. Alright, where's that box? Did I just run by it? Oh no, I didn't run by a box. This monkey over here actually gives us an item. Correct? Hey, hey, there we go. You caught up with me. I'll admit that's something. Even the game admits it. Here, I'll give you something nice. 
what he gives us is a quick capsule, which we want to give to Anna, I think. Because Anna could use to be a little bit faster, considering she's probably our main healer. Speed increased by 5, which I think is the most it can do. I think it randomly does, like, 4 or 5. So it looks like we got a bit lucky. Anyway, zigzag around here. And we have one more PSI stone. Very nice. And I think while I've got it on the mind, I am going to give these to Anna because I do not want Lloyd holding them because that would be pretty useless. All right, goods. PSI stone give to Anna. All right, there we go. Anyway, with that, we want to zigzag back around this way. And we're actually making really good time in this episode. It's probably because I actually went and cut out going back to Marysville, because that did take a while, especially selling all of that mouthwash. Anyway, right here, we'll plop us out in a very familiar location. Want to head right on up here to the XX stone, and I believe we want to use telepathy on it, correct? No, we do not. I think we just have to interact with it. Oh yeah, no, that's right. And poof, we are back in Magicant. What is in Magicant that I've been referring to that has the sixth melody? Yep, we're gonna be doing that. All right, where's the phone? Oh wait, no, there's no phone. There's a mysterious mimicker. All right, is it you? Yeah. All right, I am the mysterious mimicker. I've transferred $774 into your account. After the amount you've spent, the balance is $40,247. Spend your money wisely. Oh, I will. I might buy a house with it, considering this is, what, 1989 this game came out? Next level requires 1060 for Ninten, 960 for Lloyd, and 905 for Anna. By the way, do you want to save? Absolutely. Okay, but I was thinking of going to sleep now. I've saved your progress so far. Good night, and we shall rest. See you later. Remember, push in and hold reset while turning the power off, okay? Slam. Alrighty. So, this past episode of Earthbound Beginnings, we ventured into the vast Yucca Desert. We discovered the fifth melody, and we were also attacked by a titanic android, the origins of which will probably become clear later on, although I think it's obvious as of right now, some supernatural force out there has it out for us, and not in a good way. And next time on Earthbound Beginnings, we are going to be taking on one last challenge here in Magicant before moving onwards to some of the final areas of the game. Yeah, that quickly. We're definitely more than half over with this sucker by this point. Anyway, without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.